Bread is so important. It is the foundation of many diets all over the world. And grains are at the center of it. Grains are a very healthy and nutrition rich food. If all of us can eat grains throughout our weekly diet, we would be so much better from it, especially if you have no issue with eating grains. Those that have celiac disease where they are very, very sensitive to grains, of course, have to follow their own dietary requirements. But this is only about 1% of most of our population. So what about all the rest of us that are able to eat grains? We should do it, but we can make it even better and packed with nutrition once we prepare it with fermentation methods such as that of sourdough. Today I'm going to show you how you can make your very own starter using the ancient grain spelt. High in nutrition and just packed, packed with nutritional profiles that we really should include in our diet. I'm going to take you through the steps very simply for what you should do from days 1 through 7. Come along with me as I show you what to do. Our first step is going to be milling our grain fresh using our Nutra Mill Grain Mill. It is so simple to do and it easily provides you with the fresh flour that you need to use in all your recipes. Come on over, I'll show you how it works. What you do is you simply add your grain at the top and then you're going to go ahead and turn your knob over to go in accordance with the texture that you would want. If you want it to be a, a higher mill, then you're going to go ahead and turn your dial farther over here to the right. It's a little bit noisy, so I'll see you at the end of this one. Okay, so now that we have freshly milled our spelt, we have some wonderful fresh flour that we can use. Is, you're going to get the vessel that you'd like to use. I'm using a half gallon jar. And then all you need additionally for this step is your water. So we're going to measure out three quarter cups of flour into the vessel. And then we're going to be adding a half a cup of water. And then you want to use something that will not be reactive, such as a plastic spatula or a wooden spatula. And then what we're doing now is we're simply going to mix it in. To incorporate. Ok, 
can scrape the sides down so that you make sure that you have incorporated all the dry and the wet together. And this is it for your very first day. And what you want to do is you'll then go ahead and loosely cover your jar. You still want to have some airflow. So what I'm going to use is just a small little piece of parchment paper. And I'm just going to set it on the top and cover. And we're going to leave this overnight and then we'll take a look at it again in the next 12 to 24 hours. Now if you want your starter to move a little bit faster, you can feed your starter every 12 hours. But if you really want to have less maintenance, I will go ahead and set your feeding schedule at every 24. And you'll put it in a warm spot, perfect spot is in your cabinet, and then we'll take it from there in the next steps. I will see you at the next point. Take a look at where we are now at 24 hours. We are quite bubbly and we are really looking quite active. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and feed with the same amounts that we did before. Three quarters cups of flour and then a half a cup of water. And once you do that, you'll go ahead, place it back in your warm spot in your home, and then we'll meet again, and we're going to keep on doing this every 12 hours. And once we hit that two-day mark, we're going to make a little change. Here we are at day number two. Our sourdough starter at this moment is starting to definitely have some changes. As you can see here, we've got some bubbling going on. And we do have a little layer of liquid. Now this layer of liquid is what you call hooch. Hooch is the liquid alcohol layer that forms at the top of your sourdough starter to indicate to you that they are hungry and it is time for a feeding. So we're gonna go ahead and get that feeding done. But on day number two is where we're doing something new. We're gonna discard about half of our starter so that we can make room for our growth. And this is what you're gonna be doing each day on from now on. Discard half, Use the same amount of flour, three quarter cups, plus the same amount of water, a half a cup of water, and you're gonna continue the same cycle all the way out until day number seven. Now I recommend not using the starter until at least day seven so that you have better robust activity and keep in mind 
that this starter contains many microorganisms and there is a fight between those that would like to thrive and those that are going to die down. So you want to use your starter when it's mature, but really it will not reach full maturity and real activity until at least a month or so and then even more beyond. So let's get started with discarding half, adding our flour for feeding and our water, stirring, and then we'll store it again in that warm spot. Here we go. So I am not measuring and being specific at this time. Honestly, I'm just giving it a good eyeball. We can even just pour some out. How about we do that? I'm going to stir it in a little bit first before I pour so that I'm not losing some of the liquid that's already there. Some people pour off the hooch and some people don't. We are at day number four and I wanted to go ahead and show you how our sourdough starter is looking. I also have a little surprise. I have been working on an additional starter so that I could see how we compare in terms of a different grain. Now the second is actually two different ones. I'm using soft white wheat and hard white wheat. Let's take a look at how things are going for each one. This one is my spelt. Now when you look at it, you are now definitely seeing some activity going on here. We are seeing multiple bubbles and definitely activity here on the surface. Now, depending on what you're using, it may take a little while for you to see activity and that's okay. Keep on pushing forward, feeding and discarding, as I mentioned before, and then take an assessment at day number seven and see where you are. So this is our spelt starter. Now we're going to be taking a look at our new one that I'm introducing to you, which is done with soft and hard white wheat. 
Now there is definitely different activity amongst this starter when comparing it to the spelt. As you can see, the activity is not just on the surface, but you can actually see it all throughout. Lots of bubbles. So just from your own experimentation, you can find which starters really give you the most activity and which may actually be the better choice for you. I'll go ahead and open this one up so that you can see. On the surface, however, we don't see as much activity as the other, but we still have a bubble here or there. But really looking through your jar, we can see here what's going on. I hope that you have been able to go ahead and start your own starters. I hope this has been a help for you in seeing how different grains respond in terms of when you are working on them to make up your sourdough starter. It is definitely, from my personal experience, that grains behave differently. They even do have different smell. This one, which is the soft and hard white wheat, has kind of a still smells of itself but it has a sweetness coming to it and the spelt definitely has more now of an acidic almost yogurt type of fragrance to it so they are definitely behaving differently go ahead and work on making your own starter. It is very simple to do and you just have to do some simple routine things. I hope you'll continue onwards till your day number seven and then you'll be ready to bake your very own sourdough breads and baked goods. As always, do all you can to be more and more sustainable and until next time, be blessed.